Rudyard Kipling is commonly regarded as the most significant Anglo-Indian writer of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Born in Bombay in 1865 to English parents, at age five, Kipling was sent to live with relatives in England in order to receive a proper education and learn Victorian manners. In 1882, his father helped him find a job as a journalist for the Civil and Military Gazette in Lahore. Several years later, Kipling relocated to Allahabad to work for the more prominent publication, The Pioneer. While working there, Kipling traveled the world and began to establish himself as a writer, publishing the popular Soldiers Three and Other Stories, as well as his first novel, The Light That Failed. These first works were largely pessimistic, using the melodramatic mode to heighten the intense emotions of both political commentary and the many trials of colonial life. However, what is most notable about his body of work during this time is the commentary that it provides about British imperialism in India. Kipling's attitude toward this subject is a study in contrasts. His works often include a struggle with identity, particularly that of the Englishman striving to maintain his civilized nature amongst the crude, corrupting influences of India. Yet at the same time, the Englishman feels a certain connection to India and the culture that he so harshly disdains. These feelings were apparent in Kipling's own life, as he simultaneously referred to native Indians as mine own people in private and mocked both their politics and perceived uncleanliness in the company of other Englishmen. His writing also exhibited the idea of racial superiority and the necessity of European supervision in colonial lands that was commonly referred to as the white man's burden. Yet at the same time, these works managed to emphasize the redeemable characteristics of the Indian as an individual. This is particularly evident in his Ballad of East and West, where he writes, Now East is East, and West is West, and never the twain shall meet, till earth and sky stand presently at God's great judgment seat. But there is neither East nor West, border nor breed nor birth, when two strong men stand face to face, that they come from the ends of the earth. The great success of these first works encouraged Kipling to use his writing as a vehicle for educating the English about the colonial lands they controlled. However, after the 1901 publication of his novel, Kim, Kipling's attitude toward imperialism underwent a significant change. Where his earlier works presented a nuanced view on life in colonial India with multifaceted characters of both British and Indian origin, Kipling's 20th century writings increasingly contained overtly imperialist and politically conservative sentiments. The prior subtlety of his racial prejudice disappeared as his British and Indian characters fell more and more often into distinct stereotypes of good and bad. This change coincided with the emergence of trouble in his personal life beginning in the late 1890s and culminating in the death of his young daughter in 1899. This was compounded with the fact that Kipling was a lifelong conservative. His poor treatment of Indians in his later writings may also be explained by the loss of a connection with his native country and its people after a long time spent away. Because of this, critics claimed that his 20th century works had lost the sensitivity to Indian issues that had made his earlier work so exceptional. Nevertheless, Kipling was greatly popular among his English audience, eventually going on to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1907. George Orwell once called him the prophet of British imperialism in its expansionist phase, because as he grew more popular, people looked to his works as a guide to all things Indian. But what led to this rise to acclaim? Most prominent is the fact that Kipling wrote some of the first widely read colonial novels, which gave the average person the opportunity to escape real life and catch a glimpse of the exotic. The same average Englishman that was drawn into the exciting imperial world of India was also attracted to the readability of Kipling's work. His writings, particularly his short stories, were often published cheaply as paperbacks, which were quick reads that appealed to the busy working man. This working man audience was also central to his popularity, since Kipling wrote for an audience that shared his own imperialist values. In fact, as his writing grew more imperialist in nature, it also grew more popular. Ultimately, the great popularity of Rudyard Kipling, whose imperial attitudes and racial prejudices modern readers now shun, provides a look into the late Victorian mindset.